in terms of the government support you know today the farmer who is a traditional farmer right. is doing what we call flood irrigation yes right? and when he floods his field he would end up using more fertilizer right. he will end up using more uh, you know energy right water all of these things government subsidizes right gives him at a very low cost you right. know the state policy right. now when he uses drip he would use almost 50% of water 50% of fertilizer 50% of energy right. so the government on one hand when they are giving subsidy to the farmer right. they are saving the consumption subsidy and giving a capital subsidy right to just to take an example it's like uh, you know teaching somebody to fish versus giving them you know fish every fish, day yeah. so that's a capital investment into infrastructure by the government right and that normally let's say canal mm -hmm. government spends all this you know thousands of crores to build a dam and a canal right. the farmers don't participate right. so this is like that so i don't really call it a subsidy it's an investment support into capital asset right however now that the agriculture produce prices have gone up yeah right and farmers are getting better yields using drip uh, and sprinkler technology and they're making more money we are finding for lot of cash crops especially the payback period for farmers is between 1 to 3 years right. on this investment right so as time goes by yeah. because this was a new technology a new concept we are changing the way people are doing things for centuries right when you that you need some support yes but as time goes by over next 5 to 10 years i think even if there is no subsidy and zero subsidy or capital support from the government farmer would buy these because it makes sense for him economically so right uh, on the same note uh now that we have the solutions available to the farmers uh, the end user that is uh what is uh, gen irrigation scalability plan uh so that uh, farmers from north india and uh, other parts of the country are also able to use this technology sure we started in maharashtra right and then we have moved more into western and southern india right. to start with because right. also there are more arid regions yeah. there are more need for water in north and east plenty of water is available so farmers are less concerned are less enthusiastic about let's say technology but slowly we have we have done now so much of work in rajasthan we have started doing work in haryana punjab bihar himachal pradesh so we are coming to north as well in terms of scalability if you look at you know there is this 140 million hectares uh, total under cultivation half of that is rain fed where let's say i can't reach because it's based on rain but the re remaining 70 million hectares which is uh, on irrigated land now there we can work that from normal irrigation how can they go for efficient irrigation as against this 70 million hectares hardly about i think close to 5 to 6 million hectares now is covered with drip and sprinkler right. so scalability now some of that let's say some of the technology some farmers will never take and so on in some areas so but even if you remove all of that out of 70 i think at least about 50 million hectares can be done right and 5 6 has happened so and every million hectares is an uh, potential to do uh, approximately a billion dollar in terms of overall economic value right so we think the opportunity to scale mm -hmm. is that we have ability to continue to grow in this market for next 2 to 3 decades right so this is not a growth possibility for a few quarters or few years this is a multi decade uh, long term opportunity strategy. long term right um so uh drip irrigation or micro irrigation would be one mm -hmm. aspect of let's say sustainability in agriculture uh other aspects could be capacity building at large so uh what is uh, gen irrigation doing as far as capacity building and what is your take on uh, the extent of capacity building we are able to achieve in the primary sector sure i think that's a very good question this is about concept selling right, right. we are selling this concept that you can do more from less more crop per drop is you know our slogan right. right now in terms of capacity building because water is one of the inputs right, right. though most most vital but it is one of the inputs yes. farmer needs to know when to utilize fertilizer right. when to use agrochemicals right. how to manage his soil when right. to plant what right. type of material he should use in planting material whether seed and right. or the plants <coughs> plus we participate in exhibitions etc then we are working with almost more than 20 agriculture universities in india and trying to co-opt this knowledge to their graduates who are coming out who would eventually uh, go out. then we are training the government agriculture officers of various state governments right we are also training agriculture officers from banking system right so this knowledge dissemination uh, is the only way we can make farmer yeah. to do this miracle of growing you know significantly more and earning three or four times more yeah taking this forward to a more uh, deeper question uh, which is of understanding of the 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 biggest issue which is of climate change 
while we know that climate change uh, leaves the primary sector uh, stakeholders most vulnerable, uh, do they have real understanding of climate change? Um, not really. I right. mean, uh, maybe l let me rephrase my answer. Uh, answer would be yes and no. Yeah. Yes, because they see maybe monsoon is coming two months late. Right. Or staying through November. Now so that that's they a know change. The symptoms. They they know. Uh, they don't know why it's happening. Right. I don't think they feel they can do much about to prevent it, but as long as they are, are becoming aware mm. that efficient use of resources right. will result into higher productivity and higher income for them. Right. right? If it is told in that this manner, I think they will accept it, they will work at it and ensure that you know we don't create more damage than what we have done. Also. So uh, while they're taking care of that aspect, even if they continue to be oblivious of climate change per se, that's not going to have any uh, significant impact on mm. the solution oriented aspect. No, because if you go solution orientation, what you are trying to do <coughs> is by using water efficiently, yeah. by working with farmers to create rainwater harvesting, right. Right. Uh, by using solar water pumps right. as a for energy. Right. You are already ensuring that climate change, if it happens, will impact them less. Right. I mean, the major question ultimately at the end of the day, and this will get uh, solved maybe over the next few decades, mm -hmm. is that can you make Indian agriculture and Indian economy monsoon proof? Right. That whether monsoon is Indeed. there or not. When yeah. it comes, it doesn't matter. Right. Still, you are able to produce so much, feed so many people, yeah. Yeah. create exports, right. uh, create jobs, right. you know, in rural India, all of that, right. uh, which is so crucial for our country. Right. And I think today, with work which we have done and the farmers are doing, right. uh, the technology and innovation uh, can make that happen, where ultimately Indian agriculture will become monsoon proof and then climate change beyond the point how much it will impact where it will impact nobody knows yeah uh, if entire himalaya you know starts building and all the yeah. flood, everything gets flooded right so let's not look at those scare scenarios right uh, we are more focused on what can be done right at that micro level right to solve the problems right so what uh, is the solution uh, as far as this is concerned uh, and um, uh, what is your um, understanding of the storage facilities in india i think <coughs> So, you know, theoretically, you know, in terms of quantitative uh, data, you are right that we right. get enough right. rainfall. Right. But the, there are two different issues to India compared to most of other right. agriculture majors okay. in the world. Okay. That our rainfall comes in a very short period of time. Okay. 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 So you can't really store it, all, okay. all of that, okay. because it, there is so much of surface runoff. Right. Second, large part of rainfalls come in eastern parts of India, right. part of northeast and right. down below all the right. way to the east. So western, southern, and parts of north don't get okay. that much of uh, okay. rain. So unequitable distribution of the rainfall, right. and the timing that we hardly have about 60 to 70 uh, rainy days, right. uh, average, right. and rest 300 days are dry days. And there is no other agriculture major in the world who has this problem. Right. So therefore our issues of water are more ac uh, acute than let's say others. The second, overall as a population, we are 16% of world's population, we have only 4% of fresh water resources. Yes. So even though we are endowed with good monsoon, good weather, lots of rivers, the Himalaya, all of that, that's true. But still, our challenges the are far more. Supply-demand gap will continue to Continue exist. to be there. Uh, so finally, uh, I'd like to understand that even, so after we've taken care of, let's say, water availability, uh, you know, we're introducing technologies such as drip irrigation, in order to make sure that our agricultural sector is really prospering, uh, do you think that the overall supply chain is correct or can there be better alignment of the supply chain within the agriculture sector from the supply side? I think uh, on the supply side when you look at farmer as a part of the one who is supplying, right? right. Uh, the value chain so that it gets connected to the uh, consumers. Yeah. Uh, what, you know, generally in terms of jargon we talk farm to fork. Yes. You know, how yes. do you manage that yes. value chain? So there, you know, for example, we are doing that as a model where we buy onions from farmers. Right. Uh, we process those onions and we sell these dried onions or dried onion powder right. to customers around the world. Right. So in that, we are doing what is called, you know, people have this concept of contract farming. Yeah. So we don't think it is just contract, right? Because right. it's very difficult to enforce that contract with right. a very small farmer. Right. It's more of contact. It's right. about relationship right. farming. And there what work we are doing, we give assured prices to the farmer. We give them all the knowledge, the equipment, whatever. They grow more we, because of the assured price and the cash in hand, they don't have to worry about marketing. Right. We are able to add value right. and so like that, you know, it's continue to evolve and grow. 
सो वेर एवर कंज्यूमर्स और द पीपल हु आर एग्रीगेटिंग फ्रॉम फार्म एंड प्रोवाइडिंग टू कंज्यूमर्स दे कैन अलाइन देयर ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ गुड क्वालिटी सप्लाई एंड रिजनेबल प्राइस राइट अलॉन्ग विथ द फार्मर्स ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट ही नीड्स एन एश्योर्ड इनकम एंड ही नीड्स टू यू नो ऑल्सो लिव डिसेंट देन वेन यू अलाइन दिज ऑब्जेक्टिव सप्लाई चेन विल वर्क सिमलेसली टूडे मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम at the consumer level or the guy he wants to buy always cheapest and cheapest and cheap and lowest mm-hmm. possible price mm-hmm. and he doesn't care farmer is dying or not uh, so when you have that kind of dichotomy it doesn't work right. when you will align both of their objectives consumer and producer right. then supply chain can be seamless and we have shown and there are not only us there are few others uh, example in india when you have aligned both of these objectives it has been always a win win solution right uh, and uh, last question sir uh, your research and development segment right now uh, what what is the focus area of your r&d segment at this point uh, our focus area on r&d is or two or three that on existing products which mm-hmm. have already applied to drip etc right how can you improve more efficiency right how can you offer even newer technologies to the farmer such as uh, you know moisture sensing etc so that you further save water right. even within the drip right. you further right but we are also doing a lot of research on taking bringing new crops where drip has never been applied in the world okay more of the cereals yeah. pulses oil seeds and so on right. because that will bring a much larger area under our right. ability to right. go right right mr right. jain thank you so very much for uh, sparing time to talk to us and sharing your insights thank you once again thank you